All right, welcome. Oh, well, I should probably take that off. I, I am at my house by myself, so I, I think I'll be okay there. But as you can tell, like things are a little bit different going into the school year. We'd like to welcome everybody to our first episode of the new school year. We know that things ended not in a normal way last year and the summer has been all over the place. And as we move into the new school year, every district and school has some plans for how they want to do things. But we, as we know with this, things, things can change. We're very lucky to have one of the leading educators, not only in Davis School District, but also in the state of Utah, Holly Fisher from Lakeside Elementary, who for the past 14 years has been doing third grade and this year she's going to move up to the fourth grade. So Holly, why don't you give us a little bit of your background? Well, I, um, like you said, I'm at Davis School District and I have been teaching for the last 17 years in Weber School District, Clark County, Nevada. And then I've been in Davis School District for the last 14 years. And I specialize in 21st century teaching and learning. And as a Microsoft Innovative Educator expert, I spend a lot of time using Microsoft tools to enhance learning. Great. Well, that, and it's fantastic to have you here. Um, on your, your thing, it does say leading edge, you cater. Why don't you explain that? So um, our district has an awesome program to encourage teachers to use 21st century learning skills, um, both in their teaching and in their learning. So I went through that program and with a, a bunch of colleagues that as a team, we came up with some great ideas to be 21st century teachers and really meet students' needs for 21st century learning. Well, and that's certainly what we need right now. <laughs> we, <laughs> yes. we have a lot of needs as we found out. Um, so, so talking about that, what were some of the tech tools that you used that were critical in making remote learning work last year? Well, my two very favorite tools are OneNote and Teams. Those are both Microsoft apps with Office 365. And Teams is like my virtual classroom. And so in my virtual classroom, then I have virtual class time and announcements and posts. We have discussions. I can share files with students and also they can turn and work there. So that's Teams. And then OneNote is like the curriculum. So I have playlists for learning for my students there. I share the objective and success criteria so students know what we're learning and the expectations for how to show that they've learned it. And then also it's a place where we can share resources there in our OneNote too. So those two tools combined, they were the powerhouse for me for remote learning. Fantastic. Now you used a term there, you said playlist. What, yes. do, what do you explain what that means? So every day in our OneNote, there is a specific page just for um, the day. And it will have, the top of the screen has the objective, and then it has a success criteria, what it looks like to meet that objective. And it has just a list of different things that will work on that day to meet those objectives. So every morning, it starts with a morning meeting. That's our very first thing on our playlist. And so we meet and we have both a math lesson and a reading lesson for the day and then students go and do the practice on their own. But the practice list comes next. It will have reading and then it will have a couple of different items that they need to do. Sometimes it's a hyperdoc where they have to click the links in order or choose from a selection of links to be able to review the content. Sometimes it's a video made by me or um, some quizzes via Microsoft Forms to check but all of those things are embedded right inside a, a list, numbered list for students to complete. At the end of the playlist, then there's always a place for a daily challenge. So we have an extension of the curriculum. And finally, uh, a needs more area. So for those students that just want to do above and beyond on everything, then there's a place where, hey, do you need some more? And it has a list of a couple of things that they can do to just well, I, I think that's great that you've kind of created a way for them to go through the work and then added a few things that they can personalize themselves and move at their own pace. And I, I think that's kind of the key to remote learning anyhow. Mm -hmm. so, so that's fantastic. So why don't you tell us how you were able to use these tools, not just as um, like a technology tool, but as a way to connect 
with your student, students and help support them, and not just in the learning, but also socially and emotionally? Well, this is something that we had to rely solely on the tech tools during this remote learning time because we were not meeting with students. And so uh, we use the remote, the technology tools that we've used in the classroom. So Flipgrid is one that we've used since the very beginning of school. I love that tool. At the very beginning of school, I sent a letter to students, a back to school letter says, welcome to my class. And at the bottom, it has a QR code for them to scan and upload a Flipgrid introduction to them. But before we even started school this year, we, we use technology to meet each other and become acquainted with that tech tool also. And it was exciting for students to see their classmates and um, get a name and a face and see them, you know, say some things that they like to do. They, I also had them say what they were excited about for the year. So Flipgrid ended up being a remote learning tool that was really helpful for discussions when we were working on discussing things as a class or students submitted summaries that way. We would read a story and then they'd submit a summary. The great thing about it is they can go and view each other's summaries too. So they can see their classmates. And that was the most powerful thing about Flipgrid is being able to see and see their classmates actually see them. But some other things that I did inside Teams, I love that you can have different channels inside Teams. So I had two specific channels that were meant just to allow my students to communicate with each other. So the first one was the daily challenge channel. And in that, if students completed the daily extension for the day, they could post pictures or videos or messages inside there about the, how they completed the daily challenge. So we had students baking um, cookies and cakes and posting pictures of what they baked for our baking challenge. And then we had um, ones that did exercise challenge and you have someone jumping on the tramp, touching their toes, a picture of them doing that. and. I loved doing uh, our field day at the very end of the year. It was really sad that we didn't get to have field day. It's like a ride of passage for all students in every grade level. And so I challenged students to create their own field day. And um, some of the pictures and videos that they posted of their field day were hilarious. They were so fun. And I and students just enjoyed being able to see that, but they were able to connect with each other that way. We also had another channel called the art show. And I have a lot of created students, both. Um, you know, with drawing and things like that, but also building things. I have a lot of builders and engineers in my class. So in that art channel, they could just post anything that they created. But in class, we would do an art project weekly. And a lot of times they would just post the picture of, of that and it was great for students. But probably the most valuable way that I connected with students was through play. And I know that sounds weird for school, but yeah, we did play. Um, we did Quizlet Live. So I love Quizlet Live because you can, um, even remotely, we were able to compete with each other. So we would get on and do like a set on multiplication and we'd all be playing all together and competing in teams and stuff like that. And we also did Minecraft for education. I have a lot of students that are Minecraft freaks and they can build the most amazing things. And so every once in a while we'd say, hey, we got to check in on Emmett's Minecraft room. If you want to join today, here's a, here's a join code so we can all join in and take a look at some of the things he created. And then also we did some breakout EDUs and that's where we can do some, we have different clues and we have to figure out these puzzles. And sometimes we'd get in small groups and break out together and then we post in our teams. As soon as you break out, then you got to post right away. So everybody knows you're first, of course. <laughs> but that was super fun to just kind of take some time to just play together. Well, and I think that's what school's supposed to be. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be play. And, you know, the, the learning should just be part of that. It, it shouldn't be like different from that. And so I think that that's great that you were able to incorporate that, especially when you weren't in person with them all the time and had to do things virtually. Uh, you know, I, I think that's impressive that you were still able to have that amount of fun with them. Yeah. So um, were there any other examples that you would like to um, talk about? You mentioned field day and the art show. Um, well, one of the most important thing to connect with students is to also connect with parents. So that was the biggest thing that I learned during remote learning time was to be able to keep in touch with parents and make sure that they're surviving and also to keep in touch with the students and make sure that they're learning. 
the two things that we had to be able to do. And especially where you mentioned like the school year is going to start out not the normal way and yes. we'll have some kids, we won't have all the kids and you know, and, and who knows what it's going to look like down the line anyhow. So having that open communication, I think is really important and you, you've done some great things there. Do you have any examples from like parents and students, uh, some success stories you'd like to share with us? Yes, of course. I have a great video from one of my students and her and his parent uh, that I wanted to show, just to give a little feedback on what went on and, and how it worked for them. We had a fantastic experience in Mrs. Fisher's class. As a parent, I was incredibly impressed with how smooth the transition was in school learning to remote learning. My son excelled because Mrs. Fisher prepared and taught him how to use some valuable tools, such as Teams and OneNote. I loved how he could get on each morning, have a lesson, and discuss them with his teacher and classmates, and then get on with OneNote to do his assignments, quizzes, and anything else she had prepared. It was amazing. What I liked about Teams is that I could post and share things I learned at home through pictures. I love talking and learning with my class and sharing while still being at home. I thought OneNote was easier to do homework on rather than having many worksheets to fill out. Another thing I liked about OneNote was it worked around my schedule and I loved watch watching exhibits when I, when I finished. I, I think you have been a wonderful example to teachers all over the state uh, as to how to communicate with students and parents and really use the technology to bring out um, some aspects that you wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. Like some of the things that you shared, uh, the technology really enhanced what was happening uh, with the students and how they were able to communicate with one another and with you. And so I, I think it'd be great if anybody watching this would be able to learn more about how you did that and connect with you. Um, what could you give us there? Well, um, you can find me and follow me on Twitter at, at Mrs. H. Fishy, or you can email me if you have some questions at hfisher at DSD. I'm also part of Microsoft's Ask an Expert initiative through Skype in the Classroom. And so you can contact me through that and request a session for individuals or for um, teams or even faculty if you have some more questions. So there's lots of experts that you can request sessions with on there. Well, we were so lucky to have Holly Fisher with us today. She had lots of great ideas that you can implement in your own classroom as you know, you're able to communicate with students and parents and really figure out the best way you know, to, to manage this situation as we know that things are gonna be a little bit different to start the school year. So we wanted to start out and, and give you a good place that you can go to for ideas. And you know that at uh, uen.org slash learn at home, we have lots of uh, training and videos that can also help you out. As the school year gets kicked off, we are going to have lots of opportunities. So make sure that you, um, you know, stay up to date with what's on our website. We have lots of learning opportunities for teachers and uh, USBE has also created, in addition with UEN, a virtual learning uh, course to help you out as, as you begin to, you know, teach uh, with some kids there at school, some maybe at home, and we don't quite know what it's gonna look like, but that course could be very helpful to help you out. Again, Thanks for joining us and we look forward to having a great year with you.